the project that's been under development for longer than the career of the man himself, the Jackie Robinson Museum will open its doors to the public this September. The museum had been planned nearly 14 years ago and has finally reached completion. The soft launch was attended by the ballplayer's two children and his 100-year-old widow, Rachel Robinson. But why had the launch been delayed for such a long time? Let's find out. To start with, what caused the delay in the first place? The board of the Jackie Robinson Foundation took its first step toward fulfilling Rachel Robinson's dream of having a dedicated space to celebrate the life of her trailblazing ballplayer husband more than 14 years ago, in 2008. The museum was announced the following spring with images and signs of the Dodgers' great plastered on windows of the space in Soho that in 2010, a museum would be opening there. The signs were later changed to coming 2014. The 2014 launch didn't happen either, and after a short while, the signs were taken down. A new date was presented which promised a launch in 2019. With three missed deadlines, what exactly was the holdback? The answer wasn't a lack of will or effort, but rather setbacks that the foundation could not have seen coming. Shortly after its inception, the U.S. was hit by the Great Recession, and just when the project gained some momentum, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Over the years, the foundation had to reevaluate expenditures so as not to jeopardize the scholarship program under its umbrella. The initial cost for the museum was $25 million, but since the Great Recession caused a delay, ground was finally broken in 2017. By that time, the foundation had raised $23.5 million of the total $42 million planned with the intention of opening in 2019. As more delays were caused by the pandemic, the total cost rose to a staggering $38 million, out of which New York City contributed a little over $2.6 million. Moving on, let's talk about the inception of the project and Jackie's wife's dream of it. It's surprising how it took more than a decade for the museum to be built, despite the legendary ballplayer's history-changing efforts and popularity. Evo Filbert, the Vice President for External Relations and Special Projects at Jackie Robinson Foundation, claimed Rachel Robinson had long ago expressed an interest in a fixed tribute to her husband that would tell the full story of his multifaceted life. He further explained how she wanted the younger generation to learn about her husband's commitment to ensuring first-class citizenship for all members of society and his passion to advance equal opportunity and civil rights. In 2008, Jackie and Rachel's daughter, Sharon Robinson, expressed that her mother was a visionary as she probably was aware of the planning of such a museum. She tells how they had a trophy room in their house and that her mother kept every trophy, every letter, so they could have a Jackie Robinson museum. In her words, it will serve not only as an enduring tribute, but also as a place to inspire children and adults alike. It seems as if fans and organizations were invested in the creation of a museum honoring the legend. After the Robinson biopic 42 was released in 2013, it saw a huge boost in fundraising. Rob Manfred became a commissioner in 2015, and the museum got a $1 million donation from Major League Baseball. The league donated another $1 million shortly afterward. The documentary had a huge impact. Strata Education Network donated $6 million, out of which $1.5 million was specially earmarked for the museum. Della Britton, the president and CEO of the foundation, said that the grant came after the president and CEO of Strata, William Hansen, watched 42 on a plane. Given the groundbreaking work and achievements that Jackie Robinson achieved during his lifetime, are we really surprised that people wanted this museum to materialize? Let's learn more about what people can expect at the museum. The tickets for the museum are $15 for students, children, and seniors, and $18 for adults. The Jackie Robinson Museum, open to the public since September 5th, houses an astounding number of 4,500 artifacts. These include some of his playing equipment and invaluable items like Robinson's contract with Minor League for $600 a month. The museum also displays his rookie contract for a $5,000 salary from 1947. Apart from these, the museum has 450 hours of footage and 40,000 images. Bringing Rachel Robinson's vision for the museum to life, the second floor is equipped with an educational center. Della Britton said that Rachel wanted to offer her husband a fixed tribute, a place where people could come, be inspired, and learn about him. She explained that the idea behind the museum was to offer a safe place where people can talk about stuff like race without the worry of facing backlash as it so often happens on social media. The ribbon for the inauguration was cut by Rachel herself in July of 2022. We also learned that Rachel pushed for the location of the museum to be in Manhattan as she wanted to attract as many people as possible. Given the rich history of black people and the trailblazing work Jackie Robinson has done for the community, we can't wait to finally witness some shred of his glory by visiting the museum and encourage you to do the same. At the inauguration ceremony, Jackie's son David said that his father would have been proud and would have accepted the honor on the behalf of something that is far beyond his individual self, his family, and even his race. In other related news, why the museum is important and why you should care. If you've been living in blissful ignorance, we'll gladly tell you that Jackie Robinson was the first African-American
American to play Major League Baseball in 1947. This was considered to be monumental, since he broke the line of color that essentially dictated that black and white sportsmen would play separately. His career spanned over 10 years in Major League Baseball, during which he won the inaugural Rookie of the Year Award. For six consecutive seasons, he was an All-Star from 1949 to 1954. Furthermore, in 1949, Robinson also won the prestigious National League Most Valuable Player Award, and he was also the first black person to receive it. His effect on the game in the U.S. is considered to be significant, as his uniform number 42 has been retired since 1997 across all major league teams. This was the first time a professional athlete had been honored in any of the sports in the U.S. in this way. Jackie Robinson is also celebrated at MLB as per tradition, where each player wears number 42. Robinson has also helped establish an African-American-owned institution, the Freedom National Bank, and was also the first black television analyst for the MLB. Now for the deets on the event, who made the guest list for the ribbon-cutting ceremony of the museum. The event was, of course, attended by Rachel Robinson, her 72-year-old daughter, who also watched the affair from a wheelchair, and 70-year-old son, David. He spoke to an audience of 200 people who were seated on folded chairs. A section of Varick Street was closed off exclusively for the event. The ceremony featured a 15-piece band and was attended by former NL president Len Coleman, former pitcher CeCe Sabathia, and former Mets owner Fred Wilpin. Tony Clark of the Players Association and Hall of Fame president John Rawich were in attendance as well. Does the sports royalty guest list end here? Mm, not at all. Brian Cashman, the Yankees general manager, and director Spike Lee also made an appearance to honor the legacy of one of the greatest baseball players. Last but not least, an all-Latino starting lineup makes history at MLB. Speaking of breaking boundaries, let's hear it for the Tampa Bay Rays. The team made history on the 15th of September when all of its starting hitters were Latinos. To make things better, as a tribute to the Puerto Rican native and star right fielder, the entire lineup were the number 21 on Roberto Clemente Day. The lineup was Randy Arozarena and Yandy Diaz from Cuba, Manuel Margo, Wanted Franco, and Jose Siri from the Dominican Republic, David Pertalga and Rene Pinto from Venezuela, Isaac Paredes from Mexico, and Harold Ramirez from Colombia. Roberto Clemente Day is celebrated by MLB each year, but traditionally, only those who have won or been nominated for the Clemente Award, players of Puerto descent, and those who have worn the number 21 the previous year on their jerseys are allowed to wear it. However, the team put in a special request and asked for every Latino player and the coach to be allowed to wear Clemente's number. The stars may have been shining on the team as it beat the Toronto Blue Jays 11-0. Well, folks, that will be all for today's video. If you'd like to know more about the sports world and what's happening, make sure to hit the thumbs up button on this video and subscribe to our channel. Don't want to miss an update from our end? Make sure to hit that bell icon. That's all from us. We'll see you in the next one.